Okay, it looks like I'm recording my PixInsight window. So I'm going to try to make a Camtasia screencast um, about something I think I've learned in PixInsight. This is really, really basic. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to show how you can take an image and um, do something to that image and then take that action from the image's history and apply the exact same action with the same parameters to another image. So as you probably saw a second ago, I opened up a file uh, that was acquired by Jim Misty and made available on his website. So uh, these are some files that I'm working on and they've got uh, this particular file is M101 which was shot by Jim Misty um, uh, possibly with the help of Steve Maslin and I opened up this luminance image it ends in underscore L okay so as with most CCD images um, you learn pretty quickly that a standard trick in PixInsight is to take STF screen transfer function click the A for auto and it applies an auto screen stretch that allows you to just see what's going on uh, and Harry Page emphasizes that in his videos uh, as a basic way to see the image Okay, so all I want to try to demonstrate here is something super basic that I think I've just learned. We've got this image M101. It was made from a stack of sub-exposures, and there are often some funny borders, uh, and we can crop that. And I'm going to use that crop as an example of taking something we did to one image and being able to, to use that exact same action on another image if we have some reason for wanting to do that. Okay, so... Um, we're looking at the image and we've got this thing here called History Explorer. Now when you click History Explorer, the window will pop out and you have to go down here and pick a view. So I have to pick this image. And the only thing we have in History Explorer right now is this initial state. That's all that's here right now. So I want to clone this because I'm going to work on a clone of the image and I'm going to iconize that and put it out of the way for the moment. Okay, now I'm going to crop my image, my original image, so I'll take dynamic crop and drag my little crop cursor to find this little crop box. That looks pretty good. I'm cropping off the borders that might have resulted from image integration. So I've got that and I hit execute. Okay, so we've cropped the image. Now, if we go back and look at the History Explorer, we're still looking at this same original image. That's the one that ends in, in L. And now it shows the dynamic crop. I have no idea what most of this code means. Um, clearly, some of this corresponds to what we see here. Um, notice that they're using slightly different units here. PixInsight seems to tend to do things in units that go from 0 to 1. Um, okay, if we look at the History Explorer for the clone, we don't see the dynamic crop because we haven't done anything to the clone yet. It's still just in its initial state. So what I'm going to try to do is close that crop, iconize the original image, bring up the clone image, and let's see if we can apply that exact same crop to the clone image. Here's how I think we can do that. I go to History Explorer, I go down here to where I select View, and I pick the original image. And there's that dynamic crop. I can single click on it, have all these parameters. Now I think I can drag that onto the desktop as a process icon. I can even set its identifier just to keep myself from being too confused, and I can call this crop from original. Okay. Now, there's the clone image. The cropping uh, parameters will come from the original. So let's double click that. And when I double clicked that and expanded the process icon, it seems to me that it has put the original crop box from that image onto this one. So now it looks like I can just hit execute, and I've cropped the clone image in the same way that I cropped the original. In fact, if we compare these two, one thing you may already know is how to neaten up these borders a bit is to click that arrow, and it sizes the window to fit the size of the image. 
And I think if I put these at the same scale, let's do that little trick again, I think if we look at the borders of the images, it looks to me like the cropping along these borders seems to match between the two images, as nearly as I can tell. We can also go the other way around, compare the other edges, and I think if we look at that edge and that edge, I think the crop was the same. So there I took some sort of processing that I did, uh, basically a processing step from one image, and made it work on the other image. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm right about that, and that's a way to use this history explorer to some practical purpose. In fact, let's check the clone image. Yeah, check it out. It's got a dynamic crop on it, and I'll bet you that's the same as the dynamic crop from the original. I'm not quick enough with my eyes to see if all these numbers are the same, but I'll bet they are. So there's a little PixInsight trick for you.